Jävadavadus, som vi brukar säga här på aktiekvällen. Nej, det säger vi inte. Men vi säger däremot att vi har nio jättespännande tillväxtbolag med oss här idag som eh, presenterar sina tillväxtcase och sina investmentcase för oss och för er som är med oss och tittar. Glöm inte bort att ni som tittar kan ställa era frågor via chatten i Youtube. Gör jättegärna det så ser jag till att vdarna eh, kommer med bra svar på dem. Uh, now let's switch to English because our next uh, guest and our next CEO uh, will, hel- will hold this presentation in English. And this is uh, CEO Morten Albrechtsen, uh, CEO of Fluoguide. Warm welcome, Morten. Thank you very much. So, are, you, um, are you based in uh, Denmark? Are you, are you yes. there at the moment? Yes, we're based in Copenhagen. So uh, we're here at the moment, sunny Copenhagen at the moment. I guess it's also sunny in Sweden now in Stockholm. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'll leave the stage and the screen for you. So uh, please, well, be well, feel very welcome. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much for the introduction. And um, well, I, w- I will go to tell you about the flu guide. And the flu guide, we maximize the surgical outcome by intelligent uh, targeting. And um, our first uh, focus is really on college surgery. Um, first, to have an forward-looking statement. Um, but really setting the scene, I mean, we, we try to um, to work on, on improving the surgery of, uh, of cancer treatment. And every year, there's a 15 million people that are diagnosed with cancer, and 80% of them, age zero, will need surgery sometimes during their disease. And the problem really is that uh, in half of the cases, um, 50%, the cancer will occur uh, locally. And that's not because the surgeons are bad in any way, just because it's very hard to see where the cancer stops and where the normal tissue starts. And our solution to it is very simple. We light up the cancer with a new part targeted fluorophore. And then our lead product, if you want, has now in clinical development and it's gone through in phase one slash two study and has demonstrated that it's very well tolerated and that it lights up cancer in humans. So the basis of, uh, of the collaboration is that, uh, or the, the company is that we have very strong IT, um, IP protection. We have been listing in the first and north in, in Stockholm, and we have a market cap a little bit uh, beyond uh, 1 billion sick. And then we have a very experienced team that have a clear plan. Um, so, but let me start uh, going into explain more of the detail of, of uh, what we're doing. Um, our procedure is very um, simple and, and yet have a quite profound impact. Uh, the drug is injected into the vein uh, at the beginning of the surgery, and uh, then it will circulate through the body. It will bind to all cells that express this U-power, and that means the cancer cell. Then during the surgery, the, uh, the surgeon will switch on the fluorescent light, and then they can see the cancer very precisely. And that obviously helps the patient because um, they have an improved uh, possibility to be completely cured. The surgeon can remove all cancer the first time, but the hospital also, they can save on cost, on reoperation, more aggressive treatment, and um, can benefit from it in the sense that they actually provide a better service to, uh, to the patients. And last but not least, uh, the equipment manufacturers also uh, benefit from this uh, technology in the sense that uh, we make the equipment um, uh, better to do what they already do uh, good in, in already. I mean, we can improve the features that make the surgery even better uh, for the equipment manufacturers. And it's quite a nice thing for a company of our kind to have friends all over uh, because we are coming in as a small company in a, in a very big field, and that is uh, quite important. So the market we target uh, to begin with is about five billion uh, US dollars, and it's a quite huge market, <clears throat> and that's with our current plan. And that um, is interesting because UPA is a very extensively expressed on almost <clears throat> all uh, uh, cancers. So if you look at the, the more prevalent cancer, you have breast cancer, you have lung cancer and colorectal cancer, um, but there are also more rare cancers such as the glioblastoma, uh, which is the first indication we are targeted. It's more um, a rare disease, but it has, on the other hand, has uh, often drug uh, designation uh, potential. So the high-grade glioma or the glioblastoma is characterized with a very pr- uh, profound invasive growth so it grows into the into the brain, and as you can see on the image, it's kind of spread into the into the brain, and that's very hard for the surgeon really to remove all that cancer at the first uh, time. We therefore have a very poor uh, five years uh, survival rate, and only uh, one out of twenty patients will survive in five years. There's no surgeon. They already uh, are used to work with the technology, 
And, um, and that's one of the reasons why we have selected this, uh, this cancer as well. One of the very interesting thing with the Pluga, I guess, an investment case is, um, I'm sorry, <coughs> I'm supposed to have something in my, my neck here, is that we have a very short pass uh, to, to, the, to the approval. We have very short uh, clinical studies and we have uh, two, two studies that are needed in, in the approval. The first one is a safety study and uh, where we have a proof of concept. And the second one is a study where we prove it in uh, for regulatory purpose. The studies are very short. We have the inclusion, we have the surgery done on the right light, we're switching them to the fluorescent light, and then we have a pathology uh, to, to validate that actually what it lights up is uh, actually cancer. And the key thing with the flu guide is that we have very short, simple, and small uh, clinical studies. So in our first study now that is ongoing, we have had very interesting results. So we have treated uh, 13 patients already, and uh, our products have demonstrated to be very uh, safe and also that lights up cancer in, in the patient. It's uh, interesting that we have uh, four cohorts, and that means that we should have had 12 patients, but in fact, we have 13 patients. And the key reason for that is that we have one additional patient that had a non-cryoma um, non uh, that uh, was indicated with a, a non-brain cancer. And it was quite interesting that we saw that this patient also light up very well, and meaning that we have a potential also outside of the brain uh, as it's a non-brain derived uh, cancer. But the key point is that our all uh, patients have uh, demonstrated the cancer and that has been uh, well tolerated for, for all of them. Also, we have a very strong uh, preclinical package supporting this, um, this study. And that is the four week study we have done there where we have uh, been stopped by feasibility. So we could not increase the dose more because um, we could not uh, dose higher up in, in the animals. And what we see there is that uh, we have uh, no toxicity at all. And that's really a package that we need to, to approve. So we have uh, seen no uh, side effect, which we also expect not to see. Um, and they really also see effect so the first part of the study, which is ongoing right now, we have a primary endpoint is safety and uh, uh, dose selection. And when we have selected the dose, we move into the second part of the study, uh, where we will have a proof of concept uh, in the end of the uh, end of the year. And um, all our our results will come in uh, th third quarter and fourth quarter this year. So in terms of competitors, we are quite well positioned. Um, there's been some first generation products that are. Uh, unspecifically uh, uh, to, to the cancer. They're forming a metabolite that, that is formed a cloud around the cancer. And then they are using visible light, which means that you can see it one to two millimeters into the tissue. All the, the other products that's coming forward is a second generation product. And they are based on near infrared light where you can see it one to two centimeters into the tissue. And if uh, you remember the image of the brain cancer before, it was very invasive uh, growth into the brain. And that's for what's obviously very important that uh, you can see it uh, deeper into the tissue than one to two millimeters. But all those products, they are based on this near infrared light. Um, and they are, some of them are equipment dependent. Some of them are uh, limited to one or few indications. And then we have our product, UPA, that is uh, very specific to cancer on the one side, but it cancer type unspecific on the other side. So that means that we can go in in one indication, I mean the glioblastoma, high grade glioma, and then we can spread out from there to, to the more prevalent indications, such as, for instance, uh, the breast cancer, lung cancer, and colon rectal cancer. And we have a uh, desire to be equipment independent, so that means that we have a plug and play. We can go into the current equipment base, the current you know, surgeon, and we don't have to first to train them and, and, and uh, have a slow penetration due to, due to that. So the surgical field is quite interesting. There's a kind of a technolo technological evolution going on in surgery. And um, in the old days, I mean, it was kind of open surgeries very manually. But nowadays, a lot of different kinds of technologies is coming into the field. I mean, there's microscope in the brains, uh, endoscopes in stomach and lung. And there's more robotic-assisted surgery in, in other indications, also in the stomach, that where the, uh, the surgery is being automated um, and really what drives it is the digitalization, this minimalization and also automatization that is uh, really makes the surgical field uh, becoming much more effective and also more precise. And the very, very neat thing about that is that um, the fluorescent side uh, guided surgery where we belong to is really enabling this uh, 
uh, to happen and actually enable the surgeons and equipment to perform even better. So it's a very interesting time we are in now where we help this to, to happen. And as you can see, there's many um, companies on, on the list and many of them is well recognized and um, we are in dialogue with, with all of them. And um, I think that what is quite important to, 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 to also to realize is that it's a lot of different kind of collaborations we can take um, with, uh, with the different education, different uh, equipment and also um, different uh, applications. So our pipeline is um, set two products in the pipeline. So right now the lead indication is glioblastoma or high grade glioma in, in FD1. And we have, uh, we'll have the result in Q3 and Q4 this year. Uh, safety and efficacy. Um, we will then go into uh, one of the more prevalent indications uh, also this year with the 51. And then we have uh, a second product uh, where we licensed it in uh, last year. And uh, we are doing the preclinical studies now and also ready to move that into development in the beginning of, uh, of next year. And then just very recently, we licensed in the photothermal therapy, which is a quite very interesting concept, in fact. Um, we um, can, with this technology, we can actually, because of the flu of what we use in our product, we can uh, heat it up uh, by normal uh, lasers, and we can uh, do that at a temperature where it does not uh, damage the normal tissue around it. So that means that we have a very specific uh, destruction of the cells to which our product is uh, binding to. And as we at the same time use a UPAR, we have very specifically bind uh, uh, flu force to the cancer cells, and that's actually where this uh, laser then destroy them. And that means that if you consider a neurosurgeon that uh, uh, are doing the surgical procedure, they see some cancer in there, but they cannot remove it because it's infiltrating very sensitive structures. And that's often the case, approximately one third uh, of the patient have this situation. And that could be the center of speech or it could be movements. And no surgeon cannot really move remove this cancer because they know if they do, uh, remove it, then uh, the patient will have a disability after surgery. So what the, this technology then can do is that you can actually sweep this area with light and you can actually kill the cells deeper into this um, critical structure that's been infiltrated by the cancer. And in that way, actually, you can clean it and uh, potentially cure the patient. So we have quite high expectation of this photothermal therapy as an add-on to, to the uh, guidance of surgery. Um, and uh, of course, particularly relevant for the neurosurgeon, but also other uh, types of, uh, of, of surgeries. So the team behind um, Andreas Kerr is uh, the founder of the company, and he's been he's been a board certified uh, nuclear medicine um, uh, head of um, uh, the department of the hospital in Copenhagen, and uh, he's been working very long time within uh, imaging and uh, cancer, and also um, pet tracers. And this project here is actually a, a spin out of his department. And, and although it was only established in 18, uh, there's a decade of work that goes uh, before that, where both Andreas have been doing a lot of work and where it's been done a lot of work on the UPAR as, as a target. But Andreas is uh, very good at uh, creating the new products and, uh, and uh, really our well research pipeline. Then Gratis takes over. And uh, she's uh, very, very good on, on the production and the preclinical testing. Uh, she's done that in Sentis Pharma, where it was a very successful American, or oh, it's a Danish company, but uh, listed in, in the US, and um, has done that with a quite complicated molecule, uh, where she's taking the whole way forward to, uh, to uh, NDA. Um, then there's a creative, uh, sorry, a daughter that is doing the clinical development, and uh, what is important with her background is that that's supposed to cover a medical device, but also drug development. And although we are regulated as a, as a drug, we actually have a lot of the device philosophy in, in the development. And uh, we have to master both of, both of them and daughter can do that. Henrik is uh, our CFO that uh, came on board uh, last year and uh, they're really starting up uh, the whole commercialization as we become uh, partnering and uh, become more important for us. So Henrik got, got on board uh, for that reason. And myself, um, I'm both a technical and commercial uh, person and uh, have been working with uh, Nanobi before where we took an oncology product from the bench up to actually to the market. And um, I like to bring out uh, new technologies uh, to the physicians and, and broad clinical use. And that's really what I'm, what I'm doing. So to summarize um, um, the investment here, 
what we uh, we have we have a very uh, big market we have more than 15 million patients every year that need surgery and we have a UPAR that is um, uh, very uh, extensively uh, expressed by um, by these patients and uh, we also know that it's on the forefront of the cancer so relevant relevant uh, target and we know that the cancer occur uh, for many of the patients that uh, undergo surgery we know that um, there's some very um, important uh, trends that are going on in a very exciting market and that's the digitalization the minimization and also the automatization and they really drive the change of how surgery is done today and uh, in a way that has been um, improved quite a lot for the patient and that's actually an, an uh, trend we can uh, go in and further uh, accelerate and also um, uh, fit into. We know that um, we have had a very exciting growth on, on, the, on the stock exchange. We started out on, on Spotlight in 19 and we just here uh, earlier this year we just uh, changed the list venue uh, to the Nasdaq First North in Stockholm and um, that's because we become more international orientated now and uh, we uh, wanted to, to take that move. Uh, we have, uh, last year, we did a directed issue where we have two institutional investors uh, into our group. One is uh, a Swedish-based uh, link, and the other one is a Danish-based uh, Arbanans Landsbank. Uh, so we, despite our, our early stage, we already uh, got two institutional investors uh, on board. And also, uh, we know now that the FD1 actually lights up cancer. We know that it's uh, safe. Um, and we really have the basis for both advancing it into the phase three next year, uh, but also to, uh, to, uh, to expand it into other indications. And then um, last but not least, we have the photothermal therapy that really would add a lot to the benefit that uh, the product can do for each patient. And that would actually mean both the benefit for the patient, but also uh, potentially a higher price. So we see a quite interesting future ahead and um, I look forward to discuss it further and, and any questions that uh, you may have. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Morten. Uh, so you've treated 13 patients so far. Uh, could you describe the, uh, did they all have the same effect or is it, did it d differ from uh, one patient to the other or can you yeah, describe I mean, a little a bit? Yes, of course. I mean, um, I mean, the study is done in a way that um, this is the first part is a, is a safety study, and uh, this is the focus of it. But we also record um, the uh, we record the uh, what do you say the images that we get out of the out of the the, the patients. Um, but importantly, we, we take uh, tissue samples where we take the biopsy from 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 the patient, and it's quite important that we have to have that result before we can make any firm conclusion on it. But what we can see now is that we have it from the neurosurgeon that uh, make the surgical procedure. And when she look at it, she can see where the cancer is and what's not cancer. She cannot see the detail uh, patholo as the pathologist will, will see it, but she can see it quite well. So we know from, from that that uh, actually we can see uh, that the cancer lights up and what is not cancer does not light up. Um, and when I've said this, of course, we have to have a pathology uh, response before we can make any uh, firm conclusion on it. But... Uh, it looks very good. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, risks of uh, investment. I mean, uh, in general, uh, the risk of investing in a medtech company is considered a bit lower than in um, in another like life science uh, science company. But uh, what can you say? I mean, since you're the successful start of the FG001, mm -hmm. uh, one may consider that the risk is a bit lower, but how do you estimate, from your uh, point of view, the, the, the level of risk in the flu guide, uh, guide at the moment? Yeah, well, we, we see quite an, an interesting profile in the sense that, um, in the sense that by uh, the fact that we have demonstrated that the FD1, the first product, is, uh, is well tolerated and that it actually lights up cancer, then uh, we're taking a lot of the technical risk out of, out of, the, out of the project. What is the... Um, when you said that there's a less risk on, on, a, on a technology company, that's correct, but then there's a higher, normally higher commercial risk on it. And I think exactly. that also applied, applied to us, uh, that we have a lower technical risk, but we have, uh, of course, then a higher uh, commercial risk. And I think the re really key issue for us uh, next year would be to, uh, now we know it works, now the question is how can we benefit the most patient, uh, the fastest, and, and uh, how can we document it? And uh, that is uh, our key focus uh, the next year. And that really will determine the magnitude of benefit 
we can uh, we can provide with our product, and that again would have a strong impact on on the valuation of our company. So I think that our risk, if you should put it in a way, is more commercial risk and a technical risk. Uh, that's what we address this year, and uh, the result of this study we have ongoing will very much give some kind of hints of where we will end up. Yeah, because you are like op- operating and or interact try to interact with the patients and the doctors and the, mm. I guess also the hospital owners and the uh, the ones the budget uh, the the key the the decision makers at the hospitals. Uh, so what what is your uh, pitch to them? I mean, how how do you uh, talk them into invest? Uh, the hospitals. Yeah. I mean, first of all, the investment. They do not. One of the things that is very important is that uh, we have chosen to work with a product that is uh, plug and play with the equipment they already have. So they don't have to make any uh, any kind of investment to start using our product. Um, and um, and really, what we what we say to them. I mean, no surgeon will typically just see the see that it that it helps them guide. They will try, and if it works for them. They will use it, but I think that what is quite important, if we really want to get out broadly, and we want to, not only in, in Scandinavia but also US, for instance, which is quite important, um, that is that uh, really document the benefit, and that could be, as you point out, in in, in saving in the in a in a cost for the for the hospital, uh, and in the US particularly, they earn more money, uh, but it could also be a, a reduction of a reoperation, reduction of um, more aggressive treatment that have to be applied to the patient uh, because of cancer uh, recur. So this is the kind of endpoint we're building in the clinical program from now on what for exactly addressing your your, your point. But we have quite a high enthusiasm uh, when we speak with the neurosurgeons. Okay. Uh, as, a, as a company, you moved from Spotlight to First North in uh, mid-February. February. Uh, do you have any plans? Uh, will you move up to the to main market in the foreseeable future? Is that um, in your? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we uh, we of course we develop, and uh, as we mature, uh, this will be very obvious to to look at. But right now, um, I think the First North is fitting us quite well, and we have no plan to move right now. We had. Uh, 9,000 shareholders, in fact, and um, it was slightly complicated to move from the Dan- we were some Danish branch of uh, Spotlight to the uh, Swedish First North uh, mm. and we changed currency. So we have 9,000 shareholders we should um, move around with. So it was not an easy exercise. No. Um, um, so we don't, we don't want to move uh, too quick. Uh, now we are very happy we stay here for a while, I think. Okay. Uh, and the reason why you're at the the Swedish uh, list, is, I guess, it's because we have a lot of more life science uh, business here, or why are not? Yes. Yeah, I mean, the Swedish version of it is much more mature. I mean, the whole market is much more mature than the Danish market, and I think that the Swedish, Swedish first north um, is much better. What can I say? Reputation. I mean, there's the Danish one is um, less mature. Uh, I would put it, and not, not that it's bad in any way, just less mature, um, and um, it, it's obvious for us to to. Uh, to be listed in, in Stockholm. Yeah, uh, and let's uh, talk a bit about your uh, patent portfolio, because mm-hmm. uh, in uh, as in February you announced two new patent applications covering the use of uh, UPAR in um, enhancing surgical precision precision by il- illuminating cancer cells. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you feel confident regarding your portfolio of patents or do you still need some more to in order to secure your uh, your products and candidates? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good question. I mean, we we have the first patent uh, we have, we acquired that when we uh, was IPO'd in Spotlight uh, back in, in 19 and that will uh, cover the product until uh, 34 uh, actually. And um, what we what we then are doing since that is that we have uh, tried to 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 broaden the patent portfolio. So we are we are protecting everything around UPAR used for surgery. That is what we define as our field. And there's two aspects of, of patents. One is to be able to protect your product, and the other one to uh, is to avoid that you infringe other products, uh, other companies' products. And actually, that's been going on since we we started. And uh, the the two patent families that we announced earlier this year was actually the first two patents family that is coming out of the 18 months uh, secrecy period uh, after filing. Uh, but really, we have uh, we're quite active in in both filing patent application, but also searching and be sure that we do not uh, infringe other products, uh, other companies' uh, products. So um, we we have a quite good feeling about UPA uh, 
uh, used uh, to guide surgery. So is there like a is it like a t time schedule? Do you have a how for how long will you be protected by your patents? Yes, we'll be uh, protected to twenty four uh, for the first product. Uh, I mean the patent uh, the patent uh, that is issued in U.S. Europe that will protect the the product, and then we have to thirty nine for for the formulation and use, uh, and then further patent application will will come further down the road that will expand it, but at least to thirty nine, which is uh, at the current point in time, so quite long protection. So you will have enough time to uh, capitalize from your. Uh, from your uh, development and to earn enough money from them, would you say? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. That will be a long time. But I think actually for a lot of the, the, the tech companies, um, it will be more the technological, technological um, evolution that will actually, um, that is that's important than the patent life. But I think that while patent life is, uh, is very long, so we, that's not the issue for us. Okay. us more uh, the issue to, yeah. Could you describe your financial situation? Do you feel... Uh, secure about how to run your business considering mm -hmm. your birth burn rate or mm -hmm. yeah or no i mean we went out uh, racing uh, uh, what was that about in the danish crowns about uh, in total we raised about 30 million uh, uh, crowns uh, in the stock exchange we had about a similar amount we had an eu grant last year uh, where we partly paid out last year and will be paid out this year and in the coming years um, and then in denmark we have a tax credit uh, so we actually paid back the um, uh, the spending we have in, in, in research and development. Um, so we have going content until the uh, beginning of next year uh, and can complete the, the, the studies here. But of course, uh, as we have positive results, it would be, it would be a shame not to utilize them and raise more money and accelerate the development. So um, of course, that uh, could be something we were looking for as well. But uh, we don't uh, need uh, for raising money, we will just do it for opportunity, utilizing opportunities. Okay, so could you just uh, wrap it up a little bit uh, at the end of the presentation or the Q&A session? Or can you just give me half a minute of your uh, investment case? Mm -hmm. Yes. To describe I mean, your investment case. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, cancer uh, recur uh, is a big issue for patient um, and uh, we can light it up. And that way we can help the surgeon to remove all cancer the first time. Um, we have the basic, our first product works in humans, it's safe. Uh, and we have a very quick path until we have a um, phase three study of being late state clinical company next year. Um, we have had a very exciting uh, journey on the stock exchange and we believe we will have a very exciting journey on the stock exchange the next year uh, ahead. Um, so we can help a lot of patients with cancer, helping the surgeon to, to cure it. Okay, thank you so much for the clarification and your excellent presentation. And uh, stay safe in, uh, in Copenhagen and looking forward to follow your company. Mm, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.